Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. Uh, you know, at our recent uh, radio club meeting, I gave a little short presentation on how I log contacts. Now, one of my pet peeves is that uh, we've got a lot of uh, older ham radio operators, maybe some younger ones, who uh, have paper logs, uh, who do not log on one or two or three different places on the internet and basically impact other hams who are attempting to get uh, certain uh, awards that are available in amateur radio. So if you wanted to get, for instance, worked all states, uh, you know, yes, you can go out there and make sure everybody mails you 50 QSL cards. Gets a little expensive uh, to answer them back and, uh, you know, organize the cards. Then you have to find a card checker, and then you have to send it in to the ARRL. The card checker, checker has to send in a form. And it's just real difficult, and especially if you're working DX, a lot of those countries uh, have very poor mail service or may never receive uh, your request for a QSL card. And even if they send it, it may never reach you. So electronic is the way to go. So here's how I do it. Now, there's other ways to do it. Uh, some of the logging software that's available out there, like uh, N1MM and uh, uh, Log4OM and other logging software, can usually uh, has a feature that you can just upload your log from your computer directly into several of these sites. I don't use that method, so... I use a different method because I go a whole lot slower. But let me show you what that method is. So let's open up uh, first uh, a Q, my QRZ page. And let me kind of organize this a little bit better. There we go. And so here we are at, at W1XWX's uh, log on QRZ. Dot com. Let me kind of take you over to my page, show you some of the features uh, available on this site. So here's my page on QRZ.com. Uh, if you're a paid member, you can set up your own little uh, website. There's my smiling face with some pictures of your shacks and whatever else you'd like to put on there. So I've got a basically a fully functional QRZ page. So what I do is uh, <clears throat> I will set up QRZ uh, in one tab and then next to it I, in another tab, I will set up EQSL in another tab. So I've got these two tabs open and ready while I'm making contacts. So let's just, uh, let's, let's pick a fake call sign of some kind. Uh, W1FFS. Let's just see if that actually exists. No, it doesn't. Uh, let's just pick one here. Here we go. Okay, so I'm talking to K9JDP on the radio. So the first thing I do is I open up uh, K9JDP's QRZ page simply by entering the call sign in the little box here and hitting search. And I get his, his or her web page. <clears throat> I can find out all about that person if they have a functioning uh, web page. Sometimes you only get this information up here. Uh, and of course you have to be logged on or you won't see very much of this. It's all hidden unless you're a registered member. You can register for free. 
Uh, and if you look right down here, it's got a spot that says log a new contact with K9JDP. Uh, so once I finish talking with either the DX entity or somebody in the States or something, uh, someone, I will click this button. I'm going to go ahead and click it and show you what you get. So I've clicked that log a contact, log a new contact, and then this page comes up. Now notice it's captured the date already and the time. So that's captured. It also will capture the band. So let's suppose uh, this is the first time I've used it and I'm actually on 40 meters. So I click the 40 button. And I can, of course, change the mode to, you know, whatever I want. If it happened to be PSK uh, 31, you know, I could put that in right there. And it's got some other fields. Uh, really, the only ones you uh, need to enter is something like this. This is really all the information you need to enter. I do come in here and actually type, uh, you know, the actual frequency and I also put a little comment which is usually 73 from Texas okay that shows up on my log in uh, QRZ now I'm not gonna click save because I don't really have a contact here but all I would have to do now is click save and let me back up and once I did that <coughs> back up here that contact would show up as the very first entry here now my entire I've been doing this for about three years now so my ever since I started actually working uh, uh, right on the radio with my first uh, general license back in uh, late 2012 so all my contacts are here if I go back a few pages you know you can see earlier contacts etc etc now there's a way to export this data okay you can export this data if you go to settings which is right here and click it you can see that it's got a couple of uh, functions here. You can import contacts, of course. We're not going to do that. We're going to export the contact. And we can export it at, to LOTW, uh, which is the ARRL uh, logbook of the world. Or we can simply download uh, the, or just simply hit export and download the entire file onto your computer. So that's one way to do it. And then you've got an ADIF file on your computer, which you can manipulate or put into a logging program or actually upload, upload the log to various sites. And I'm going to show you that. Now, my technique is not to use this. What I do, the moment I've logged an account, I click the other tab, which, ta which is EQSL, and I go ahead and see this little icon with a, looks like you're writing something here. You click that, and you get the little logging box. So remember, all my data is, is right here in my logbook. Remember, I just logged that contact, so it looks like this. So obviously, I need to enter the first one into EQSL, and all the information I need to do that is right here. So I'll come up here, and I'll fill out the call sign, the time, uh, the band, you know, what mode it was, what the receive, uh, uh, report was from that contact and a little message I can put in this box. And I get all that information right here. What's kind of neat is once you set up a particular band and mode uh, on the first go around, 
and you save it, from then on during that session, it will automatically pre-fill the, the band here and the mode here. Those will already be filled out properly. So you won't have to enter those again during this session. Likewise, over here on QRZ, once you've saved this uh, particular contact, it will save the band. It'll save the frequency, but it'll be wrong if you move. And it'll save the mode and the time. So, uh, <clears throat> automatically. So it, it goes kind of quickly once you do the first one because a lot of these will be pre-filled out on the second go-around. So I enter that contact here and I go over here to EQSL and I do the same thing. Now, I've already uh, set myself up for two award programs by doing that. I can get the uh, QRZ awards which they're available here. Let me show you where that is. Go to your logbook. Let me just refresh this. You see right here where it says awards? You click that, and you can see I've got worked all states, continents of the world, grid, and there's a new one called counties. I've got those four awards uh, already here on QRZ. So uh, and if you want to actually see what they are, you can come right down here and click one of them. So if we go, uh, if I'm wondering where do I stand on DX, my DX uh, 100 award, I can click that. And it'll come up in the mixed mode first. And you can see on QRZ, I have 77 out of 100 entities and you can scan the uh, little list and see who never verified you uh, from the contacts that you made you can send them an email uh, if you want to but uh, I don't usually bother doing that I just keep trying to make contacts so there's some awards you can get on QRZ so by entering in it there you're eligible for these awards and uh, you can get certificates printed uh, right here on the site meanwhile over at eqsl you're eligible for eqsl awards and uh, there's an award little certificate looking thing icon right here and if you click that it will take you to the awards section of the website. And you can see there's all kinds of awards that are available on EQSL. All right. And you can look right here and find out what your standing is. So for my E Australia award right now, I have five of eight entities that I need to get that award. Now the one bad thing about this is it does not automatically refresh. So uh, let's take for instance uh, eCanada uh, which I already have an award and you can see I have an award here for EDX. Uh, I already have that. Uh, let's pick one. Uh, here's EDX 100. You can see mix mode. It shows me 38 credits needed for 100. Okay, telling me this tells me right away that a lot of people are not uh, uploading their logs to EQSL. And uh, you know, come on, be friendly with your fellow hams, even though you may not be an award chaser, you do a disservice to other hams when you don't log your entry online. You prevent them from getting their awards because it never shows up because uh, you never took the five minutes to upload your ADIF log, fly, log file which I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. So anyway, to get this to update, 
you have to actually go to standings for that particular award and say update my awards page and it will look at all the latest contacts that you have and refresh the mixed okay so nothing happened so they're all there so but a lot of times i'll refresh these uh and i'll get you know closer to my award so don't just come to this page and look at it and say, well, that's where I am. If you're interested in a particular award or a band or something that you're working on, you have to click this standings button. Come on over here and click update. And it'll update that one entry uh, on the standings page, which is what this is. It'll update it. So that's EQSL, and again, you have to register for these two sites uh, in order to use them. Uh, registration, I always pay to play. Uh, I just feel like uh, that's what you need to do if you're going to use a site uh, for tracking your log. You need to pay a small amount, which both of these are a very small amount annually or semi-annually. Uh, to stay okay with the website. So I do that. Now, where else do I log, or how do I go about doing the rest of the logging? Because this only took care of QRZ and EQSL. So right here on EQSL is what I use. I don't use the feature over here in QRZ. I actually use the one in EQSL. This little arrow is actually the your log or your outbox. It's got all your contacts in there that you've logged. So let's click that. <clears throat> and it's going to take you to this page. And you can see it's showing you every mode and how many contacts you have in, logged in that mode. It's showing you even by month what you did on down. And you'll notice two download buttons. Uh, I don't use this one. I use the one here at the bottom that gets you your entire outbox. Everything that's in QSL uh, can, is available by clicking this button. I'm going to click the button, and then when I do this video, I'm going to cut out some of the time because it takes it about 30 seconds to go through your entire log. If I talk slowly enough, maybe you'll get to see it in real time. Anyway, down here, it's waiting for EQSL, and what it's doing is going through my entire log and generating an ADIF file, which is what can be used to uh, update uh, other websites or logbook of the world. So here we go with the page that came up. It didn't take that long. And here's that ADI file, and here's the text file. I never use the text file. I always click ADI. And I get a page of text. This is actually my log. If you start reading it in, in a particular file format that uh, Logbook of the World and Club Log and these other logs I'm going to show you can accept, uh, called an ADI file or an ADIF file. And if you, you can actually read it, and you can actually uh, go in here if you got really good eyes and correct a bad entry. Uh, there's some software out there that's available that will let you go in here and alter this if you need to. So anyway, I'm going to save this to my computer. And what you do is you go up to File, Save Page As... And it's 
notice it says W1XWX. That's what I'm going to save it as. I'm not going to do anything else but save it. And, of course, I've got one out there already on my computer, so I'm going to overwrite it with this newer version. And now I have it on my computer. So one of the things I always hear from hams that don't do this is, well, I'm not going to put my log on some website, and then they go broke, and I, I don't have my logs anymore. Well, that's just simply not true. You can basically download on a daily basis if you want your log back onto your computer so you have it on your computer and the neat thing about that is now you can share it so let's go to these other sites and I'll show you how I share this file with these other sites so let's go to the first one that i'd recommend that you log to other than qrz and eqsl remember i already logged there i'm finished with those let's go over to club log club log now i've already logged on to the site i have an account here so i'm going to click the upload button right here there's my pretty face over here I'm going to click the upload button and it gives me some, you know, settings if I want to change it. In other words, I could overwrite the log totally with the new one I'm going to send. But usually I just use the merge into existing log, okay? And it, that way it'll ignore duplicates. So it'll only merge new entries. So you have to go find that file. And mine are always in the download folder. And there it is, W1XWX ADI file. That's it. So I'm going to double click it. And it's got it w1xwx.adi and i'm gonna begin the upload and there you go and it's ready to accept it and i say submit it and it submitted it and it said there was a file in there that was new so now i've logged my latest adif adi file into club log that's how long it took me to do that all right just a second the other another place i log is on ham radio deluxe log <clears throat> so here it is and i've already logged in as you can see and of course you have to go to these sites and register this this one happens to be free and right here it says import ADIF logbook. So I'm going to click that. And it says skip duplicates or update duplicates. Well, I always skip duplicates. So we're going to browse and find that same file again and double click it. And now it is uploading it into ham radio deluxe log just that fast now while it's doing that i'm going to show you the final site that i upload to and that is qrzcq qrzcq i've already logged in and it has a logbook function right here click that a lot of Europeans use this site, I've noticed. And a lot of Europeans use the club log site. So I come up here to where it says upload. I click that. And I browse again. Find my ADIF file. And there it is, w1xwx.adi. And I upload it. And there it goes, it's finished. So basically, as soon as this ham radio deluxe gets done, it's the slowest of the bunch. Depending on when you try it and how many people are on there doing it, it can be a little slow. 
but eventually this is going to get to 100% and I'm going to get a little box that says uh, your file has been uh, imported okay. So let's jump back over here and we'll kind of go through this again. I belong to QR. I belong to all these sites. I'm a registered user. Some of these sites are free. Some of them you have to pay a small amount. I have gone ahead and paid the small amount. So again, QRZ is where I originally logged the contact, followed by EQSL, which is right here, and I. Usually at the same time I do both of them, but it's really not necessary to do that because if you have logged, say, 20 contacts into uh, QRZ and then you just look at your page, those 20 contacts are going to be lined up right here. You can just transfer this data uh, into... EQSL at some time at your convenience but in my case I do them simultaneously or one right after the other then I will go up here into uh, where it says uh, log outbook and I'll download that ADA, the ADIF file into my computer and from then on I have a copy now, do I keep a log on this computer other than the ADIF file? Let me, let me kind of show you that. Yes, I keep two logs on this computer as backup. Three logs, actually. The original ADIF file is kept on this computer. I also import it into Ham Radio Deluxe, which is on this computer and I import it into log 4 om which is on this computer uh, so basically I have a triple backup on this particular ma machine uh, <clears throat> neat part is if you have uh, network computers like I do uh, sometimes have three machines up and running I can look over here where this uh, ADIF file is located, right here, right there, and I can copy that file over to the other computers and uh, basically have backups on multiple computers of my uh, ADIF file, which I originally remember downloaded. I originally downloaded this from EQSL. So with that said, let's just take a look at the Ham Radio Deluxe one and see, oh, it's finished. Your logbook has been loaded and we say, okay, and there it is. And my logs are all in hamradiodeluxelog.net so <clears throat> in this amount of time I have put my log into one two three four five different places and I could have gone ahead and put it into my copy of ham radio deluxe on my computer and on my copy of log 4om on my computer so fully backed up and Every ham radio operator that's working for awards is going to thank me because I spent five minutes uploading to these sites and will help them uh, keep, keep good copies of their log on their machine along with applying for various awards uh, that are available to amateur radio operators. So with that said, I wish y'all clear skies in 73, and everybody have a great day, and see y'all later.